Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to explain something that sounds complicated but isn't once you get it. It's called CQRS which stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. By the end of this video, you'll understand what CQRS is, when to use it and why it's so helpful even if you're just starting out as a developer. Let's get into it. Imagine you're building an online store, something like Amazon. Now your app needs to do two things. First, it needs to change data, like when a customer adds a product to the cart or places an order. Uh, second, it needs to read data, like when someone wants to see what's in their cart or check their past orders. Most apps try to do both using the same code and the same database. That works at first, but over time, it becomes messy. You are mixing read logic and write logic in the same place. Reads are supposed to be fast and simple. Writes are usually more complex. They need validation, business rules, maybe even transactions. This mix makes the code harder to understand and harder to scale. That's where CQRS comes in. Well, what is CQRS? CQRS is a simple idea. It says, let's separate the part of our system that writes data from the part that reads data. So we have one side called the command side that handles all the changes like placing orders, adding items to the cart, or updating stock. And we have another side called the query side that only reads data like showing products, orders, or recommendations. These two sides can use different models, different databases, or even different architectures because they have different jobs. Write side is focused on making sure business logic is followed. Read side is focused on performance and speed. Let's understand with real e-commerce example. Let's say a customer clicks add to cart. That triggers a command. The backend gets that command, checks if the product is in stock, then saves the cart item to the database. That's the right side. It handles changing the data. Now later the customer goes to view their cart. That's a query. The system looks up all the items in the cart and sends that list back to the user quickly and efficiently. That's the read side. It only reads. It doesn't change anything. With CORS, we keep these two parts separate so our code is cleaner and our system is easier to scale. Next, why is CQRS pattern useful? First, it improves performance. The read side can be super fast. Maybe it even uses a separate read-only database or a cache. It doesn't deal with heavy logic. It just fetches data and sends it back. Second, it improves flexibility. You can scale the read side differently from the write side. Maybe your reads are 100 times more frequent than writes. Now you don't need to scale everything, just the part that needs it. Third, it improves code clarity. When you look at your write logic, it's focused only on rules and validation. When you look at your read logic, it's focused only on queries and formatting. Now, should you use CQRS for every project? Probably not. If your app is small, a single database with simple reads and writers is fine. But if you are building something bigger, with lots of users, lots of traffic or complex business rules, then CQRS becomes very helpful. Especially in systems with microservices or event-driven architecture, CQRS fits naturally. You can even start small. Use it for just one part of your system, like the checkout or the order history, and expand later. Now, one last question you might be wondering is, how do the read and write sides stay in sync? If we're writing data in one place, and reading it from another, how do we make sure the read side actually shows the latest changes? Here's how it works. After a command is processed, let's say a customer places an order, the system sends out an event. That event might be something like order placed or cart item added. This event gets picked up by another part of the system, usually an event handler, and that handler updates the read model. So even though the command and query are separate, they're connected through these events. And this happens really fast, often within milliseconds. But technically, it's not instant. It's called eventual consistency. So when a user places an order, the read model updates just after that. And when they check my orders, the new order is already there. That's the beauty of CQRS. You keep reads and writes clean and separate, but still in sync through smart messaging. Some teams use message brokers like Kafka or RabbitMQ, others use internal event buses. 
whatever tool you choose, the idea is the same. Write the data, emit an event, then update the read model. It's simple, fast and scalable.